Hi, this is Hard Rubino from DevilsDigest.com. I'm over here at the Pac-12 Tournament in Las Vegas with staff writer Jack Harris following Arizona's uh, state loss in the first round of the Pac-12 Tournament, 97-85 to Colorado. And Jack, uh, I think what we saw today was uh, just a lot of uh, familiar trends that caused Arizona State uh, to lose five of the last uh, six games. What in specific do you think really did Arizona State uh, this afternoon? Well, I, I think their defense just wasn't quite good enough, especially coming off ball screens and giving up too many open threes. Colorado is not a team that should be making 13 three-pointers on you, and yet that's what happened to the Sun Devils today. And then they were relying on having to make contested shots, which has been the case for them most of the season. It worked in non-conference. It hasn't worked in Pac-12 play. And we saw that today. Colorado went on a 15-1 run midway through the second half, of which the Sun Devils, they missed six straight shots during that, during that span, which really ended up deciding the game. And um, as my colleague uh, Doug Haller pointed out, Arizona, um, Colorado rather was averaging 67 points scored per game coming into coming into today. Uh, they uh, just bettered the average by 30 points, and uh, that uh, that obviously was a, a big big issue for the for the Sun Devils. Uh, even though you talk about three pointers, uh, both teams shot um, th uh, 13 um, shots uh, beyond the arc. Uh, Colorado just they did it at a much um, higher rate, 60 uh, percent, uh, and it seemed like each and every three pointer. Was we really, really was a backbreaker, but you know, you know, speaking of the um, just uh, outside shots in general, I thought Arizona State, uh, you know, as as they really have all year long, relied heavily on on their guards, and when you have three senior guards, you definitely expect that. Uh, the problem is that Shannon Evans and Trey Holder combined to uh, for uh, ten made shots out of out of twenty seven attempts, and um, granted, size is an issue when ASU faces almost every team in the Pac twelve. Colorado was not that case, and we saw Daquan Lake and uh, Romello White have uh, both of them have some of their better games. And uh, to me, at least personally, I think that uh, just uh, relying too much on, on on the jump shots, especially when they were not falling with any consistency whatsoever. I thought this is a game that Arizona State really could have feed the beast down low, so to speak, early and often to have a better chance of uh, coming on coming away victorious. Yeah, and I think you saw that early. Mickey Mitchell was getting involved at the beginning of the, uh, of the game. Daquan Lake, you know, got into double digits with points but as has been the case with the Sun Devils when when they start to face adversity they, they like to rely on the jump shooting and it didn't work today now you're exactly right Colorado is not one of the bigger teams in the Pac-12 they have Dallas Walton he's a seven footer but outside of that there isn't that much size on that team they could have exploited Colorado more down low but you know this is a team that's going to live by the jump shot die by the jump shot uh, and and you know the senior guards still each of them had 14 points but they needed more than that today especially with how spotty their defense was and it probably would have helped if they had gone down low more maybe grounded out Colorado a little bit more throughout the game they didn't do that though they, they tried to outshoot the Buffaloes most nights that might work today was not one of them and this is a game I definitely thought we were going to talk about, the senior guards uh, propelling Arizona State to victory. It was actually their freshman guard, Remy Martin, probably feeling a little slighted that he was co-six man of the year, facing Dominic Collier today on the court for Colorado. Uh, Remy Martin uh, just did slightly better than Collier, uh, scored, uh, scored 20 points. But uh, again, um, as always the case, Arizona State only goes as far as the senior guards uh, will take him. We saw that a lot in the non-conference record, and I know that 12-0 mark, that number three uh, national ranking, seems like ancient memory with so much that has gone, um, you know, uh, for Arizona State from from December until now. Uh, I don't know about you, Jack. It just boggles the mind that since right before Christmas, I believe it was uh, December 22nd, if I'm not mistaken, Arizona State has only won eight games uh, since then in the span of of, of, of uh, roughly three months. And now the question on everybody's everybody's mind is: Besides what happened, is can Arizona State uh, get um, that coveted and somebody determined berth uh, come Sunday? If nothing else, they really put their faith in the committee's hands, and maybe worse of that, in a lot of bubble teams' hands. Yeah, and I think you're exactly right. Now they're going to have to sit and watch what happens around the country. You already saw Louisville win a game today. You have teams like Utah and Washington that are in this tournament that can make runs. You, you never know what happens in some of the, the mid-major conferences if, if a team that's not ready, already in the field wins. And, and you're exactly right. They, they no longer have control. Had they beaten Colorado today? They're probably in the tournament, but now, look, you have 11 losses. You only have 20 wins, and you're exactly right. Eight wins in the last three months is mind-boggling, just given how well this team was playing, given by the margins they were winning by it. It wasn't as if they, they were scraping their way through those 12 wins to begin the season. They were blowing teams out, and it has completely changed in the conference. Yes, they've played a lot of close games, but they've also lost a lot of close games, and today was their first double-digit loss of the season. 
I don't know how much the committee's going to look at that. I know that they're going to definitely look at the Kansas and, and Xavier wins, which if they get into the tournament, it'll because of, be because of those two games as to why they will keep playing in March. But if things don't break their way, there's a very real chance that they can end up in the NIT, which, again, there are very few teams in the country that start the season and go non-conference undefeated and find themselves on the bubble, let alone maybe on the outside looking in. And, and here's the weird thing or the funny thing about this. I think if you told a lot of ASU fans back in October, ASU is going to finish 20 and 11, uh, will be, you know, have a chance to get into the NCAA tournament, but most likely be in the NIT. People would see that as progress, especially after the first two years of Bobby Hurley when he's trying to rebuild a program and had back-to-back -back, uh, lo losing seasons. This 20 and 11 feels a whole lot different. Dare I say, like some of the 20 wins that 20 seasons that Herb Zendek had that ended up not qualifying for the NCAA tournament. Uh, th this is a feeling that uh, that really just uh, gnaws at, at the at the, at the Arizona State fans. Um, assuming Arizona State does not get into the NCAA tournament, would you personally deem this to be a uh, disappointing season, or is it really important to keep perspective and maybe try to? I don't forget is the right word, what happened between November and December was absolutely a magical run in program history. It's definitely progress, but it would still be disappointing if they, if they missed the tournament for the program. I mean, again, like I said, teams don't go 12-0 and then miss the NCAA tournament. I think making it even worse is the fact that the Pac-12 just hasn't been very good this season. It's not as if you know they got off to a great start in non-conference and then they had a gauntlet of a conference schedule that they struggled in. There were a lot of winnable games in that schedule that they didn't win. I mean, you get swept by Oregon, you, you lose a game to Oregon State, you lose two games to Stanford. Like, those are games that legitimate NCAA tournament teams need to be winning, especially the ones on their home floor. Now, it is progress. You know, you win 15 games in Hurley's first two years, 20 wins this season, plus all of the recruiting and everything else that, that is trending positively for, for the team right now. But... If they miss the NCAA tournament, there, there's no way I think ASU fans can feel anything but disappointed just because this is a program that doesn't go to the tournament very often. And when you have chances, not just to go, but at one point this season, they were looking like being a one or a two or at least a top four seed. And to, and to miss out on it completely would be a disappointment for sure. Well, here we are standing in a city that was built on luck. I don't know if Arizona State needed luck to beat Colorado today, but they're really going to need a big dose of good fortune between now and Sunday for uh, the dominoes to fall their way, for a lot of bubble teams to get off the bubble, and uh, for Arizona State maybe just maybe uh, to sneak into the NCAA tournament. Reporting from Las Vegas from the Pac-12 tournament, uh, this is Jack Harris. I'm Hodor Bino from devilsdigest.com.